So I've glued the, uh, the layers together and I just have to take this out <coughs> and um, flatten this underside before I radius it. And normally there's a little bit of glue that gets kind of stuck in there just from the, uh, the cleaning up method. So if it's a bit stubborn, get a thing and hit it. That's actually was glued in a little bit more than normal. Um, so that is the linings. Really stiff. It's nice. So these, this is what this is. So this is a reverse kerf lining. And as you can see, this is really bendy. This is like that's as much as I can bend it. It's a, like really hard. Um, and you know what? Let's weigh it just for the hell of it. Thirty-three point seven. And then this one is twenty point five. That's not touching. Yeah, that's accurate. So that's interesting. Uh, just you know, just a little tiny irrelevant tidbit. Um, so the weight doesn't particularly matter on linings. Um, but lighter is better, but with solid linings, um, the stiffness is great, but it's also the mass which is going to contribute to uh, the vibrating area of the top um, moving out. So when you have like really thin sides or, or not dense and floppy sides and you have very floppy curved linings what that does the energy from the top sort of wobbles down the sides and you know is lost um, when you have very stiff sides the, these are double laminate sides so there's amazon rosewood on the outside and indian rosewood on the inside then you've got solid linings with um, wood made from a good uh, density or made from wood with a good density such as this this is mahogany um, walnut is also good you could even use Indian rosewood um, when you do that you've got a lot of st added stiffness to the whole structure and there's a lot more mass here and what the mass does um, as well as the stiffness, but um, it's the mass of the sides with the linings. So the normally the if you if you put some sawdust on a guitar top, the the ring of the monopole is you know about an inch and a half inside the top or inside the perimeter. Um, when you have this configuration of solid, stiff with mass, it moves that vibrating area out towards the perimeter. So therefore you get a bigger vibrating surface. And when you, you're talking about from here to here, that's, it might not seem physically that much, but it, it, uh, it's a huge area that you're you're making vibrate so you normally have this much of a vibrating area and suddenly it's this big that's not the scale <laughs> but um you know if i can even gain quarter of an inch vibrating surface or vibrating area of the surface um i'm going to go for that because it, it makes 
for the possibility of a better instrument. You might not make a better instrument or a better sounding instrument, but it certainly gives you um, hmm, what does it give you? I don't know quite how to put it. It it's not limiting you achieving the best possible instrument. You can still screw everything up with the bracing and the top thickness and all that sort of thing, of course. But uh, you know, if if somebody says, "Would you like a larger vibrating area?" I'm going to say yes. So uh, I'll show you how I simply flatten this bottom area. After that uh, huge segue. Okay, so I've got this set up. These Rockley are dust right things are really cool. I like them. This might get loud. this is how it's going to be glued in um, this is getting a radius this way so this way so I really only need the parts that are going to be glued to the side which is this face um, so I didn't quite we well can see it most obviously up here I need two hands. So you can see this inner edge wasn't sanded flat. So that's how it's going to get glued in. You can see that it's this was a bit of a thinner bit of wood anyway. Um, I didn't chase that, didn't bother chasing it because it's going to get rounded over. So that will probably be taken care of. And if like it's definitely going to be taken care of down here because I did actually get all four layers but here I didn't but I'm not worried about it because the round over is going to get that and if it doesn't quite get it I'll just um, ferret in by hand and no one will be able to tell so on to radiusing so this is my radiusing jig it's got a quarter inch radius bit on here. Sorry, not a quarter inch, a quarter round radius. And what I'm going to do is just, this is the treble top side. So I'm just going to go around this edge and put a round on it. Um, if you want to do it a little bit safer, you can make one of these kind of safety jigs and you can this obviously <laughs> isn't gonna maybe this will fit in there no. anyway if you make one of these the size of this then you can hold on to this and it is a bit safer but um, it's uh, I've done this a lot and I'm careful um, so I will go ahead and I'll turn the sound down for this.
Okay, so I originally had this route a bit in, and uh, I changed it to the larger one just because it wasn't this little one wasn't big enough to radius the four ply as nicely as I wished. But um, that's the result. So it looks like reverse kerf lining from the from the edge because reverse kerf lining looks like this and that's just a another another aesthetic thing so we'll just clean this up with sandpaper and then shellac it and then glue it in Okay, so I've just finished sanding this to 220, which is smooth enough, and sanded out any flaws or anything. So now I'm going to just shellac the face of it. Just the face and the round over, especially the round over, but don't get any on the, the gluing surface. So, what this does not only makes it look nice, but more importantly, and why I do it. At, at this stage anyway, because I, I shellac the inside um, later on once I glue the back on. But why I'm doing this now is when I, because when I glue this on, the glue squeeze out on the linings is a little bit easier to clean up, or a lot easier to clean up. Uh, when this is shellacked or it doesn't stick to it at all or it, it sort of doesn't uh, it doesn't smudge stick and by smudge stick I mean you clean up the glue but there's still like this glue haze that you've got to uh, sand off and I really dislike that job it's just a kind of one of those life annoyances um, it's like running errands but stupid stuff. Um, so that's done. Um, also, solid linings or laminated solid linings. If you wanted to, it's a good opportunity to. You can. I just saw it here, which made me think of it. You can see the layers here. If you wanted to, you could do a decorative, more decorative kind of feature where you have one layer of um, dark wood, then a light wood, then another dark wood. So it would look a little bit like purfling on the inside. Um, I've never done that, but one day I will when I remember it. Uh, so now we just let that dry and then we're ready to glue it in. So just some prep work before you glue in that lining. You can do it now or um, just after you pull out the, or pop out the, the glue lamination. This is just the, some wood and glue residue. Uh, and that just, Scrapes off with a few swipes, so it's, it's nothing to worry about at all. But just make sure you do that before you put in the linings permanently. Um, and that's the last thing I can think of to tell you before you glue in the linings. And so obviously these. 
pre-glued lining, the shellac is dry. I mean, I'm recording this video about 30 seconds after the last one. Um, and it's just beautifully stiff, looked great. And this is just gonna, it's because it, we um, glued the, Because this is, I forgot to put my microphone in, because this is, uh, was glued up in the, the actual shape, it's just going to fit absolutely perfectly. And so there's no pissing around like this with trying to um, clamp voids and stuff like that. So we just have to use, um, you could probably you don't have to use these, these are really strong, but I just use them because that's what I use. But uh, um, you could use lighter clamps, but you don't need to because it's better off just buying these. Um, so uh, let's glue these in. And then the only thing we have to do is just a light bit of glue. I don't uh, put a lot on. When I'm laminating, I go pretty heavy on the on the glue when I'm laminating these layers together. Um, but when it's all ready to go like this, you can go a bit lighter. And so you, you get less glue squeeze out, which is just, you know, better because it's easy to clean up. Um, the easiest clean up to, or glue squeeze out to clean up is ones that don't exist. So on to gluing them in. So I can't remember if I mentioned this prior to right now, but before I glue in the linings, and usually before I even bend the linings, I radius the back and not really the top because so little comes off the top in regard to um, radiusing it that you can just leave it flat, but the back um, needs to be tapered properly and uh, radiused um, before you glue the solid linings on. And so I just drive the bus as you call it, or as it's known, just on this radius dish of 15 foot. And you just work that until, you know, the entire perimeter has been sanded. Uh, and then once the lining has been glued in both sides, um, you I'm going to be gluing this in in a second, just a little bit proud of the sides, just a tiny bit for both sides. And then you do this step again so the top of the linings get sanded or radiused. Um, but uh, just have all that sorted out before you glue uh, the linings in. So finally we will be gluing in the linings. Okay, so here is the shaped linings. This is a four ply for the top to uh, allow more gluing space for the herringbone, which I've talked about. Just a final check. Looks good. Don't forget to put some on the end here. So this has been shellacked. 
which will help with uh, glue cleanup. So when we glue this in, we just need to glue it in a little bit proud of the, the uh, sides. And we just want to push this up. As far as we can. So you want to just have a look at what is the lowest part of the linings or the, the layers of linings and just uh, figure out how high you need to raise this. Remember the inner lining, the, the one that everyone will see, needs to be a little bit higher because of the radius. But that's only a tiny bit because this is 28 foot. Anyone getting into YouTube videos, get a cordless mic, because goddamn annoying. Okay. So you can see the glue squeeze out, which we will deal with now. So we'll just clean up with the uh, straw, then clean up whatever's left over with a brush. Stiffer brush is better. Okay. 
so when you clean up the glue with a brush you can see if there's any problems just in regard to gaps and stuff I just trimmed the bristles of this brush because it wasn't stiff enough okay so I'll add a clamp just to the waist and uh, that will be that. A, uh, a dedicated shaped core is better for this job, but this works it's for this. So that is all clamped down and clean, and uh, that is a excellent. So everything is glued in place and is beautiful and clean. So just for the final part, I've got a small bit of wood here, uh, I don't know, an inch and a half long. And I'm just going to put some glue in it. Butt it right up against there. And that just acts as a, um, just as an aesthetic thing, just to cover up that little gap in there. And that's fine. So that's, that's it. That's how I do it. I hope that was of uh, help to you. Um, if you like these videos, please subscribe. Thank you. Bye.